Hello friends, today I'm gonna recommend some apps in VS Code extensions that will improve your productivity. And at the end of the video, I will show you the must-have extensions for beginners because I got many comments from you guys, so you will see which extensions I'm using. Okay, if you are ready, let's get started. The first extension is Quokka.js. It's an awesome extension that allows you to do really fast prototyping and testing in your JS code. And it's not a single purpose extension, it has tons of useful features, let me show you some of them. After the installation, you can go ahead and use Command or Ctrl Shift P or F1 button and I will write here Quokka. And as you can see, there are many options here. You can create a new JavaScript file or TypeScript file if you are using TypeScript. Or if you already have a project, you can run Quokka on it directly using the start on current file option. Let's open a new JavaScript file and as soon as you do that, you'll notice this Quokka terminal here. It's gonna show you your code results and possible errors. So let's write here a number and I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose. And as you can see, it warns me immediately here and in the console and it says the error. So let's create an object. I will say user and name John and for the surname I will write an equal sign instead of a colon so we can see the error again. Let's fix it. And the second awesome thing is to check your variable or function results. You don't have to save the file and go to the browser. You can directly write here user and as you can see the object is here or you can write it in the console log and awesome. We can do the same thing for a function. Let's say const h after n year and it's gonna return the h after n year. Let's check our function console log 24 and 4 and the result is here. Let's use the user user.h and a. As you can see it's that easy to test your variable and functions. Of course, they are really simple examples, but when you test a complex function or a long object or array, trust me, it's a lifesaver. Let's write here an array that includes a couple of movies like that. And let's console log. As you can see, the result is too long, but if I hover over this result, you're gonna see the normal version. And also you can see it here in the terminal, or if you check this tool here, you will see all your properties and their types. String, array, number, something like that. Let me show you one more thing. As you can see, there are some green squares here. And if you write anything wrong, it's gonna show red. Basically, it indicates the execution status. When you write variable here, actually it executes it. But here, it's not executed because there's an error. There is also a gray indicator. And that means there is nothing wrong with this statement, but it's not executed yet. Let's write here a function that takes two numbers and sums them up. As you can see, it's great that because we didn't actually call this function. If I say add 1, 2 or xy from here, now this line is executed and it's really useful because sometimes we forget calling functions or we get different results instead of what we expect. But thanks to these indicators, it's really easy to figure out where the problem is, especially if you are using an API. Let's say we have an API server, it runs on localhost 5000 and when we make a request for this user's endpoint, it's gonna call user's router. And inside this router, we have some users and after get request, it returns those users. It's a simple API. And in the client side, to get those users, I'm gonna use this function. As you can see, I'm making a request for the user's endpoint. It's gonna print those users. If there's an error, it's gonna show up here. Let's call the function. So we can see the request details status, headers, so on. And here we have the users. And as you realize, this block is green and this block is gray because the error is not executed. Let's say we had a mistake and wrote here double S for example. This time this line is not executed because there is no data and the error line is green. And we can see the error details and it's 404. 
So you don't have to go to the browser, open your console and check where the problem is. It makes you much more faster and productive. And all these features in the free community edition. There is also a pro version for more features. If you are using the pro version, you don't have to write console log. You can directly select what you want to see like that. Or you can use live comments to check any function, any method, or you can use quick package installation. So you don't have to write npm install and package name. You can directly install from here and other awesome features. You should definitely check that out. The second extension is actually it's not going to be a single extension. I'm going to show you my favorite VS Code themes. And uh, first one is material theme. After the installation, you can click here and choose a team. And as you can see, there are many teams here. Actually, let's open a JavaScript file here and we can see better. To do that, again, have fun and I will say team and choose color team. After, you can choose any of them. To be honest, I don't like dark themes of material team, but its light themes are awesome. I usually use light team when I write code in the morning. But after 3 p.m., 4 p.m., I change it to the dark. But as I said, its dark themes are okay, but not perfect to me. So I'm using either Dracula official and soft theme here. It looks awesome. Or night owl and no italic theme. It's really nice too. And also, let me show you another theme extension, which is Peacock. It changes the color of the menu bar and activity bar. And again, F1 or Command Shift P, just right here, Peacock, and change to a favorite color. Then you can choose any color here. It's really awesome when you work with different VS Code instances. For example, one of them is the backend project, and the second one is the frontend project. So you can assign different colors for them. Now it's easy to distinguish between these two projects. And the other extension is CodeSnap. It allows you to take a screenshot of your code blocks. Command Shift P, CodeSnap, and choose your lines here, and click here. And it's gonna save your screenshot. Perfect. Sometimes I see people in the Lamadev Facebook or Discord groups and they directly copy and paste their codes or they take a screen picture using their mobile phones. Guys, please don't do that. It's really hard to help you with those codes or images. Just use this awesome extension and ask your question with your screenshots. The next extension is REST Client. It's an awesome extension that you can use for API requests. If you are using an API and if you want to test it, you can basically create a new file and let's say test or whatever you want. But the extension of this file should be HTTP. After that, you can write here the request method and API endpoint. When you click on send request, you will see your results here. Let's get user by ID like that and for the post request you can write here your configuration like content type json it's just like choosing json and row option on postman and here you can write your body i will write my credentials and send request also you can write here any other configurations like authentication token something like that if you want to use a shortcut you can write API URL like that and you can use it everywhere. It's that easy. By the way, I was going to recommend one more API extension, which is Thunder Client, but somehow it's not working. I don't know why, but it's a more professional API client extension. As you can see, it looks like Postman. You can create collections, choose your configurations here, and I highly recommend it. You should definitely check it. That because if you are not using that complex APIs, Postman might be a little bit heavy and I don't know, I prefer using these lightweight extensions. And another extension is to do highlight. Sometimes we take quick notes between our codes to remember what we have done before. 
or if you are working with your colleague or your friend, you have to write some comments to explain how your code works, but after a while, it's really hard to remember where are your to-dos and fix me notes. So this awesome extension just highlights your important notes, just like that. And now it's much easier to distinguish. And the next extension is Marquee. It's a really cool extension. If you get bored seeing the classic VS Code homepage, you can use this extension. It shows up when you open the VS Code and there are some useful widgets here. You can see your projects and start writing code by clicking them. There is a weather widget, the latest news about programming, trend GitHub open source projects, and here's a to-do list. And I think it's the most useful feature of this extension. Before starting coding, you can check what you need to do today, or after coding, you can write new to-dos for tomorrow. You can take notes here, so it's not perfect, but as I said, it's a good alternative for the homepage. Another one is import cost. It's a really popular one. When you install any library, you can see here how many kilobytes is that. It looks really cool and sometimes it can be really useful. For example, when you check something on Stack Overflow, sometimes community users recommend a library to solve your problem, but when you import it, you see here 100 kilobytes or something like that. So basically, you can delete it and search for basic solutions. The next extension is Code Time. Basically, you can see how much time you are spending on coding. If you open the dashboard, you can see here Code Time. Code time is the duration of the usage, and active coding time is the duration of the writing codes. And you can see your daily and weekly details. It's a good extension because sometimes we really work hard without sleeping, exercising, spending enough time with our friends or family, so it's not healthy at all. If you don't want to be burned out, you should definitely fix your time management. There are many extensions, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I will show you the must-have extensions and finish this video. I show them at the end of the video because I know most of you already have them, but for the beginners, I think it will be useful. So here are the extensions you have to use as a web developer. The first one is Live Server. When you create a website, to see your results on the browser, you can use this extension, so you don't have to worry about any changes on your code. When you change anything here, it's gonna show up on the browser immediately. Second one is auto rename tag. When using HTML, it's really annoying not to being able to rename both tags, but after this extension, when you change any tag, it's gonna affect the other one. The third one is Predir. Predir is an awesome code formatter. It enforces a consistent style by parsing your code. After writing codes, when you press Alt or Option, Shift and F, it's gonna correct your lines. And the last one is AS7 snippets. If you are using JavaScript, React, you should definitely use this extension. It has tons of shortcuts. You can create functions easily, console log, and other shortcuts. You can check them here. So that's all. I hope you liked it. If you want to see part 2, you can leave a comment. And as always, if you learned something new today, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to follow Lamadev's social media accounts. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.